Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome to the Slight Edge, the inspiration, our nightly session. Let's start the book without further ado. We are reading The Slight Edge by Jeff Olson. And here the book is in front of you on your screen. So we yesterday we read about uh, the edge that all of us can have, about the formula of keeping it simple, keeping it disciplined. And it's all right to fall because only if you fall do you rise. Only if there's failure will there be success. And we read in detail about it. Today we're going to resume our journey from page number 29, the last section, the slight edge philosophy. Your philosophy is your view of life, something beyond feelings and attitudes. Your philosophy drives your attitudes and feelings, which drive your action. By and large, people are looking in the wrong places. They're looking for a breakthrough, looking for that amazing quantum leap, the philosophy of the crap stable and rule wheel. I don't believe they'll ever find it. I've had colossal failures. We've read this, but I'm going to repeat this. And I've had remarkable successes. And my experience is neither one happens in quantum leaps. This happens through the slight edge. The purpose of this book is to have you understand the slight edge philosophy, to make it part of how you see the world and how you live your life every day, to understand the patience, to understand that little steps compounded do make a difference. That the things you do every single day, the things that don't look dramatic, that don't even look like they matter, do matter. That they only make, that not only make a difference, they make all the difference. Throughout this book, if you look carefully, you'll find at least a dozen statements and you look really closely many dozens that embody this philosophy, statements such as do the thing and you shall have the power. Here are a few examples that you'll come across in the following pages. Success is the progressive realization of a worthy ideal. Understand the statement. Let's. So when you get successful, it's only because you have been progressing progressing, progressing, whatever idea you had with ideals, proper systematic way you are progressing. And when they realize that when success happens, success, pe successful people do what unsuccessful people are not willing to do. Again, very important to understand that they take that step, which people don't take because of fear, and then they become really successful. There's a natural progression to everything in life. Plant, cultivate, harvest. Here's a suggestion that can maximize how much you get out of this book. That is not only reading it, but also absorbing it and applying in your life. Every time you come to a fundamental statement of philosophy, highlight it. Then go back regularly and read through just those highlighted sections. Your own personal guide to the slight edge philosophy. The slight edge is also the philosophy embodied in the three stories you read in the beginning of the book. It is understanding the tremendous potential of something as seemingly insignificant as a penny. It is knowing in the process of simple positive actions repeated over time, the faith that miracles do happen. If you know one to trust the process and keep churning the cream. We talked about this in detail yesterday. Now we come to the new section. Just add life and stir. How wonderful is that? The slight edge philosophy is a missing ingredient. You need... Uh, Madhuri can't hear me. Uh, the others, can you hear me? Let me know because I think I'm audible. Can you quickly pop a message? I am audible to the others. Madhuri, just check your connection again there must be some problem just leave the call and join again the slight edge philosophy is a missing ingredient you need for all the personal development books how tools and life guides to work if you don't grasp the truth of the slight edge then no matter what health books you read you're not going to be willing to do the little things that lead to a healthy life no matter what you learn, no matter how many books you read, CDs you listen to, or seminars you attend, if you don't absorb this philosophy of simple steps and the compounded effect over time, you won't successfully apply those things you learn to create the results you want. So again, very important. If we learn 
कुछ कितनी भी किताबें पढ़ लेते हैं कितनी भी यूट्यूब पे सेशन सुन लेते हैं कितने भी रिट्रीट अटेंड कर लेते हैं अटेंड कर देते हैं अगर हमने फिलोसफी ऑफ सिंपल स्टेप्स और उनका धीरे 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 जो उनका असर आता है ओवर टाइम अगर उसको अप्लाई करना और उसको जीना नहीं सीखा तो हमें वो रिजल्ट्स जो क्रिएट करना नहीं आया सो इट्स नॉट अबाउट कि हम आध्यात्म की दुनिया में हैं वी आर हियर टू लर्न टू ग्रो इफ यू रियली वांट टू ग्रो यू हैव टू स्टार्ट लिविंग दीज बुक्स दैट यू रीड दैट्स व्हाई दिस बुक इज इंस्पिरेशन दिस क्लब्स नेम इज इंस्पिरेशन बिकॉज इट्स नॉट अबाउट जस्ट गेटिंग इंस्पायर्ड इट्स अबाउट इवन डूइंग द एक्शंस the slight edge will help you apply all the information you learn from the health book the sales book the investment book the positive attitude book the slight edge is the book you need to read highlight reread along with your fitness class your career planning your continuing education and pursuit of new skills aaj slight edge life mein kisi bhi cheez ke upar hai to aaj ghar mein teen prani hai the three people in the house one person has a slight edge because maybe that person invested too much some years ago maybe that person is elder and everybody listens to him and others say that we are equals but uske, uske, why does he have the slight edge why does he ha- have the edge over us because he or she has invested before you in emotions or things in the family so people listen to him or her similarly if we keep practicing the simple steps suppose the, these steps you're not applying in business skills but you start applying them in rozmarra ka everyday lifestyle skills then when we learn to apply them in our normal life and we have a slight edge in our daily life then we have learned the skill and we will be successfully applying it in our business strategies or any of our goals that we want to come you know we want to reach the slight edge will prepare you to be able to absorb all the other information guidances and education from all those other books classes situations and experiences whatever your deeper desires are in life i want you to have them and i know you can that is my passion belief and i've seen it happen too many times to doubt it but you need a place to start the slight edge is that starting point it's the first ingredient key points of chapter number 1 people everywhere are clamoring for the formula the secret ingredient the path to improve their lives the secret ingredient is your philosophy what you know how you hold it how it affects what you do once you change the way you think then you can take the steps that will lead you to the how tos the things you do every day the things that don't look like they matter do matter they only they not only make a difference they make all the difference we've read this we've reread this so i hope it registers in a mind somewhere at least in some part of a mind if it's there we will start applying it now people the testimonials by people let's read them to get more inspired stan snow of north yarmouth emi wrote i have used the principles of the slight edge to improve my physical fitness starting with one push up and once it up a day adding another each day and building to over 100 per day i've used it to help pay off debt build my savings and investments and improve my relationship with my children agar hum ne ek you know kar liya ki aaj mujhe ek karna hi karna hai and maybe do din mujhe aaj ek ek karna hai next day main ek aur badhaunga fir main ek aur badhaunga step by step by step chalte rahe bina ruke tab ja ke success milegi but ek din humne falter cheating kar li to hum discipline mein piche chale jate hain and then to rebuild the discipline takes time because the body or the mind gets used to cheating so you know even when people diet and this you know one is a cheat day this entire concept is in itself a myth every day one should be able to live conscious living that you know i eat whatever i want to eat but in moderation and there's nothing called a cheat day reward day because every day is a reward day then when you're doing this so called diet it doesn't become difficult then it's like yeah this is my lifestyle whatever i want i eat but in moderation that is why they say whatever gets measured gets created gets successful so very important for us to be accountable to be answerable at what are we doing there has to be a checklist which we see every morning that this is my to do list and have i done it or not 
I have uh, Linda Keddy from Destin, Florida says, I have applied the slight edge principles in so many areas of life, chunking every project into annual goals, monthly outcomes, weekly agendas, daily disciplines has helped me accomplish massive improvements in every area of life, from health to relationships, to communication skills, to finances. By identifying daily disciplines in every area of life, I was able to move from cancer to outstanding health, from non-communication with siblings to best friends, from non from struggling as a single mom to creating a net worth of over $1 million. The slide edge principles compounded over time will make a massive shift in any area we choose. Now, isn't this testimony in itself a powerhouse? And when we read this book every day, Little, little, not too much, 20 minutes a day. Now, that's why in this inspiration section, I have told myself that there'll be no break. Sunday ho ya, Monday, Diwali ho ya, Holi. There'll be no break. Why? Because this is, that's what it's saying. There is nothing called a comfort zone here. Break out of your comfort zone. Do what you must. Every day, come what may. By applying the principles of a slight edge, I've lost 35 pounds in just three months and I'm still going strong. I'm also working the principles into my job, part-time pursuits, and every area of my life. I have quit focusing as much as on the goals, and I'm focusing more on the little things I do every day since I can control those. Richard Green, Franklin, TN. I totally agree with Richard here. 99% of us have a goal, and we keep looking at the goal. Suppose if my goal today, say, is my goal today is I have to lose 35 kilos of weight. Now, 35 kilos of weight by itself sounds like, oh my God, is it even humanly possible? But if I break down the 35 kilos into, say, 10 months journey, and I say, I will lose three and a half kilos every month, which means I have to lose about 800, 900 grams every week, which means I have to look at my calorie deficit by eating in moderation, whatever and everything, but in moderation and working out. Now, working out becomes too much when I'm overweight. So, okay, let's start working. Let's start doing mild exercises. Now, is that possible? I'm giving a very small example so people can relate to it. But similarly in life, you have something huge to do. Break down that down into smaller, smaller, smaller things. And just tell yourself that every day I must do it. Shuru chai aapko ek minute se karna hai? Like we heard just two minutes ago from Stan. He started with one push-up. And then he built up to 100 push-ups. Then he says, I had debt. Now I have savings. How does this go? Very simple. Learning this light edge philosophy and applying it daily, diligently, successfully, without fail. Richard Green from Franklin says, um, okay, uh, we've read this. Baker 4 from Edmund O.K. says, After reading the slight edge, I decided to apply the philosophies into every area of my life. As a father, I bought a coffee for my kids and started imparting the wisdom of things that they are easy to do, easy not to do. As a doctor, I started giving my patients who were dealing with hopelessness a copy of the book. I tell them it's Prozac in paperback. As an author, I implemented the slight edge principles into my books as well. For every role in your life, there are slight edge applications that will make a huge difference. It's very imperative to understand the power of the slight edge. Now we commence the chapter number two, the secret of easy things. Now actually there's no secret, but there's a big secret. Let's understand what it is. Traditional shaker him says, Tis a gift to be simple. Tis a gift to be free. Tis a gift to come down when you ought to be. And then we find ourselves in the place just right, twelve in the valley of love and delight. How beautiful. Have you ever met a really successful person? You know whom I mean. That woman with that easy, engaging smile. The one who makes you feel instantly at ease. Even as you stand in awe of accomplishments, the guy who's always dressed for success, who looks great even when he isn't trying, and somehow makes you feel better about yourself just being in his presence. People who not only are successful, but also seem to breathe success and fill the space around them with it. They live in beautiful homes, travel to exciting places, 
fly first class, are surrounded by people who love them and admire them, are appreciated, respected, recognized, happy, healthy, creative, and fulfilled. Winners in the game of life. Why do some families have such great relationships, such warmth and fun and caring closeness, while others are perennially angry with each other? So distrustful and distant, they might as well live on different planets. Why are some people positive and upbeat, while others are miserably negative, constantly complaining and criticizing? Why is it some people never seem to manage the time to stay in shape, while others run a few miles each day even though their lives are just as busy? Why are some people digging deep and deeper into debt while others just keep earning more money? Why is it that some people seem to make dream after dream come true while others spend their lives building someone else's dream? Why are some people successful and some people failures? What's the difference? Really? What do successful people do? You've probably read and heard lots of statistics. Happy versus unhappy marriages, health versus illness, how many retirees barely survive on fixed incomes versus how many reach their golden years in comfort and security. There are a hundred and one ways to measure it. But if you simply look around you, you can see it. Most of us aren't making it. My observation is that about one person in 20 is achieving a significant measure of his or her goals in life. Financial, professional, personal, marital, spiritual, in terms of health, in whatever terms you want to look at, 95% are either failing or falling short. What are the 5% doing that the 95% are not? There is only one difference. It is not heredity, education, looks, talent or inheritance. It is not preparedness meeting opportunity. It's not chance either. They all understand the slight edge and how it is working for, for or against them. If you will learn to understand and apply the slight edge, I will guarantee you that in time and chances are less than, than you imagine, you will have what you desire. You will be among the 5%. You will be successful and you will achieve those aims goals and dreams by doing simple things. A bold claim. I know and I make it only because I know it's true. I've seen it too many times to doubt it. If you learn to understand and apply the slight edge, your life will become filled with hundreds of thousands of small, seemingly insignificant actions. All of them easy to do, none of them mysterious, complex or difficult. And those actions will create your success. That's what successful people do. Simple things that are easy to do. Now, isn't that amazing? Suppose, again, I'll give you an example. There are five things that we know which have to be done. Now, one thing is very difficult. Like it's impossible. One is very tough. It will take time, patience, dedication, determination. Name whatever it will take. One is medium. Kar sakte hai. Two are super simple. Yeah, it will aram se ho jayega. If we keep working and depending on the last, the final fifth month, then we may, and we have five days to do these five things, then we may waste time. But if we are so quick and fast about the first two and they can happen in one day, then you're left with four, thing, four days, but three things to do. Then the third thing, which you know is very okay, medium, you can do it. It will take probably half or three quarter of a day. Even then you're left with three and one quarter of a day for two things. This is how compounded interest works. This is how compounded time works. If we keep working on things which we are great at first, because you're autopilot, you know that you can do it, skillful you are about it, then do it fast and move on to level two. You won't start with the toughest and, you know, even in board examinations, what do you say to the Attempt the simplest that you know, quick, fast, you know that you've got points here, don't waste time. So that, you know, you know that if there's a one man marker, five questions, do that first. Don't wait for the one question or five marker, which is tough. Do that in the last, attempt in the last. That's what successful people do. Simple things that are easy to do. Simple things. What are simple things? Wait a minute. 
how are these simple everyday actions supposed to create all this wondrous wonderful happiness health success for me if they all be easy to do if anything could do them if there are things anyone can do why are only 5% successful isn't the fraction so unbelievably rare people all make an effort but only 5% become successful excellent question because they're all also easy not to do and while anyone could do them most won't why because they'll say are the word simple aram so ho jayega baad mein kar lenge are it koi problem hi nahi hai an attitude of procrastination that attitude of delaying actually results into not doing the thing at all fundamentally we all take pretty much the same actions every day we eat we sleep we think we feel we talk we listen we have relationships and friendships we each have 24 hours a day 807 8760 hours a year and we each fill these hours one way or the other with a sequence of little tasks and actions any one of which is simply insignificant gold medal marathon runners eat and sleep so do people who are 30 pounds overweight successful entrepreneurs think and feel and have relationships with other people so do those who are unemployed or even living on the streets people who make lots of money read books people who are broke read books too the successful and the unsuccessful both do the same things basic things in their lives day in and day out yet the things successful people do take them to the top while the things unsuccessful people do take them down and out so what's the difference the difference is their awareness their understanding and use of the slight edge in their life and work successful winners understand the slight edge unsuccessful people do not the difference that will make all the difference between success and failure between achieving the quality of life you want and settling for less than you desire and deserve lies 100% in which of these those little insignificant actions you choose to do this is why we are all capable of doing what it takes to be successful we are all capable of being winners and yes that includes you the slight edge is always working for you or against you the slight edge is already always at work in all of our lives the purpose of this book is to help you become aware of it how it is working in your life every day every hour every moment and every step you take and every choice you make now do you realize uh why the uh, this new health industry they talk about sitting is a new smoking and they talk about 250 steps every hour what are they training us into accountability for every moment that you have to be active you can't be sedentary agar 1 ghanta ek jagah baith gaye aapki fitbit smart watches aapko beep karte are 250 step nahi diye that is why that's how this works aaj itna hi this is it for today and now we will go on to a gratitude meditation which nitya shanti sought all of us so once again close your eyes sit down comfortably back straight gently close your eyes be in touch with your breath and take a deep breath in and a deep breath out just be in alignment with your breath after you've taken three deep breaths and three deep breaths out the body is ready the body is ready to call it a night now take your both hands together next to each other near your heart make little buds out of your five fingers on the left and five on the right gently open one petal second third fourth fifth thinking of something that you're grateful for
thinking of all that has happened throughout the day. It could be your health. It could be the food. It could be the company you've shared today. The conversation you've had. It could be your time in the park or with Mother Nature. Maybe you hugged a tree. Maybe you did conscious walking. Maybe you heard something inspirational on any social media. Maybe being a Sunday, you just relaxed and nurtured yourself. Maybe you said something special for somebody. Maybe you complimented somebody. Just think of these 10 beautiful things. And after you've thought of them, just put your hands near your heart, one on top of the other or next to each other. And thank you for this beautiful heartwarming feeling of expansion your energy field, of expansion like never before. Be so, so grateful. Feel so blessed that there's so much you can count in just a mere 24 hours or maybe even less than that. And now further, expand your hands outside as if you're blessing somebody in front of you. This somebody can be anybody. May I be a channel of blessings for someone today. May my blessings reach far and wide across time, space and ease. May my blessings resonate as never before. May I keep becoming a channel of blessings for someone today and every day of my life. So be it. So it is. So it is. So it is. And take a deep bow of gratitude and thank your masters, angels, guardians, teachers, gurus, archangels, any gods if you believe in, any energy that you believe in, in this dimension or the other, in this realm or the other, in this planet or the other. Thank you, thank you, thank you for nurturing us, protecting us, guiding us, nudging us and ensuring we are always on the correct path. Thank you. Now you can open your hands in the abundance pose, spread them as wide as possible. Look up towards the universe and say, I am open and receptive to all the goodness in this universe. I'm becoming the best version of myself every day. I am ready. And so it is. And now you can gently open your eyes. Sleep tight. Have a great night. I'll see you tomorrow at 9. Thank you for joining in the secret space. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.